Okay. The title of my talk is Breaking Down the Barriers. Oh, no. <laughs> I want you all to think of three things that you don't think you'd be able to live without. <laughs> I'm sure some of you might have said your phone, your car, or maybe your laptop. But one thing I can guarantee some of you didn't think about was music. Now you must be thinking, music, it's really not that important. There are so many other things in my life that I wouldn't be able to live without, and music isn't one of them. But your phone, think about how many songs you have downloaded on your phone right now. And your car, could you imagine having to sit in silence and listen to your own thoughts while you're driving to work or to school? I personally don't even leave my driveway until my phone is connected to the Bluetooth in my car. And I want you to think about how boring parties or charity events or sports games would be without music blaring in the, black, in the background. Or how many late nights in the car with your friends listening to throwback songs or the concerts you've been to and the memories you've created with your family or friends while listening to music. It's everywhere around us. There are multiple reasons why the absence of music would change our life in a way that we wouldn't be able to live without. Quite literally, it would be silent. <laughs> music has much more purpose in our lives than just background noise. It can help us express ourselves and create a sense of identity to connect with others despite our differences. It can also lead to various psychological benefits as well. I personally would not be able to live without music. Any of you know me well, you know that music is basically my only personality trait. It's all that I talk about. My friends always make fun of me for saying that I brag about having the best music taste, but in reality, we all know it's true. And I brought some receipts. Here are some text messages of friends asking me to make playlists for them. Give you a second to look at it. I have spent hours creating and perfecting all of the playlists on my phone for different occasions different emotions for different people, you name it. But I could never exactly explain why I had such a deep connection to music. I just knew that when I put it on, all my worries would go away and it would be a distraction. When I tried to explain how music <laughs> affected me, I would get responses as, Ella, it's literally a song. It's not that deep, <laughs> but music is my outlet. I decided that I wanted to try and understand the reasoning behind my obsession with music and why I had such an emotional attachment to it. Now, I'm not the best with words, which is probably why I rely on music so much, but I can never understand how simply listening to music would help me navigate through my own emotions. According to a study by Sharam Heshmat, music has the capacity to mimic emotions. The temporal patterns of music mirror our emotional lives such as the introduction, the climax, and the closure. For example, a slow tempo naturally conveys sadness because it has a structural resemblance of the slowness that we might see in a sad individual. The similarities between the feelings of emotions and the structure of music is what allows the listener to feel as though they're expressing their emotions without actually having to talk through them. Similarly, if the listener is not able to exactly identify the feelings, Listening to different types of music can help you to figure out what exactly it is that you're feeling. Not only does music help us identify and express our emotions, but it can also have a huge influence on changing our mood as well. I know for a fact that some of you might have a playlist with throwback songs, or that a girl in here has a playlist called Big Girls Don't Cry that they listen to when they do in fact need to cry. Or that some boys might have a playlist that they blast in their headphones where they're at the gym lifting some heavy weights. <laughs> but that music doesn't just create an environment to mimic the tone of the setting, but it actually contributes to changing your mood as well. You experience a rush of happiness when you're listening to throwback songs because your brain recalls all the positive, and, the positive emotions and memories that you have connected to those songs. 
Similarly, that's why we're so quick to turn off the radio when a song is just too unbearable to hear because it reminds us of an ex. <laughs> an example of this would be why before many sports games or while lifting weights, people will listen to songs with a lot of beat drops or fast paced music. In an interview, neuropsychologist Daniel Levitin stated that early evidence says that music can alter pain thresholds as it can increase immune system functions. There's stronger evidence that it can affect mood and heart rate and respiration rate. Therefore, fast stimulating music stimulates the production of adrenaline and other hormones that get your heart beating faster. Now, zooming out on the effects that music can have on us individually, music has been a vital tool in connecting and uniting people for thousands of years. There are almost 7,000 languages in this world, but one universal one that we can all understand is music. Whether it was in the era of the cavemen, who would play rituals with music, with bones and stones, music is and has been one of the most effective ways to bring people together and to help them forget about their differences. Experience I think everyone in this room has seen before, whether it's in a room, a school, or in an entire sports stadium, is the song Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline is known for its ability to bring strangers together to embrace and sing their hearts out. Here is an example on a subway in Boston. <laughs> social isolation was at its peak. We turned to this song again in the hopes of uniting and connecting each other as Neil Diamond created a global sing-along to the song Sweet Caroline. Oh, okay, I guess it doesn't want to play yet. <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna take her? Sorry. Yes. Next slide. <laughs> Um, another example of how music can bring people together is at concerts. In December of last year, I went to a concert for one of my favorite artists ever. <laughs> I was in a room full of strangers that I had never met before, yet we were all friends. We had one thing in common, and that was our love for music. That night, I made at least 10 new friends, whether it was just for the night or ones that I still talk to for the, to this day. My love for music has allowed me to connect with other people who also share the same interests as me and serves as an easy um, icebreaker for me when I'm meeting new people. In fact, a study by Diana Bower showed that people associate musical taste with holding certain values and that this assumed connection between music and values influences how much we think we'll like someone based on that. So the next time you're feeling down or you feel like you need a friend, just play some music. <laughs> and that's my talk. Thank you.